I might be on to something here. Amen. Now, if you do this and you get your toe stomped on, then be smart enough to pull it back. Don't just keep going in a wrong direction when nothing is working out. People who stay in the middle of the road always get run over. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, sir, what is the secret of your success? A reporter asked a bank president. He said, two words are my secret. And sir, what are those words? Good decisions. Well, sir, how do you make good decisions? One word, he said. And sir, what is that word? Experience. And how do you get experience? Two words, the bank president said. And what are they? Bad decisions. <laughs> <laughs> So he had, his whole success was from good decisions. And how did he learn to make good decisions? By making bad decisions and learning from them. There's nobody that ever does it all right, but you cannot, please, don't just keep staying in fear and being afraid to do anything because you're afraid of doing the wrong thing. Now, I believe that there are some reasons why people don't make decisions. Perhaps a person is indecisive because their parents never allowed them to make their own decisions. Parents, please, as your children begin to grow and they add some years to their life, let them make a few more of their own decisions as time goes by until you finally have taught them how to be responsible for their own life. If we keep doing everything for our kids, we cripple them. We have to let them make some of their own mistakes and learn, if you will, the hard way. What's going to work and what's not. You guys are awfully quiet out there. Is that, isn't that right? But see, we want to keep them from getting hurt. I get that. We want to keep them from getting hurt. I tell you, I was really bad like that with my baby, who's now 33. But when I had him, my youngest child, I had three teenagers. We'll just leave it at that. And then I decided I wanted to have a baby, and Dave thought I'd lost my mind, but, you know, we agreed that it was God, and now he's the CEO of Joyce Meyer Ministries, all the stateside ministries, so I'm sure glad I had him, or I'd have a lot more work to do. But because he was my baby and just whatever, you know, I was just wanting to do everything for him, everything for him, everything for him. And, it, you know, if I had it to do over, I would probably do it a little bit different, but a lot of the things that I teach you, I teach you out of my mistakes, and my mistakes are worth me having made them if you can learn something and it will keep you from making some of the same ones that I did. So if you're having a hard time letting go, mom, come on, dad, you're having a hard time letting go. Don't cripple them in the future because you won't let them learn how to make their own choices now. And obviously that's dependent on their age and lots of different things. Indecisive people may be insecure about themselves and their abilities. That's the case with a great many people. I'm having a hard time reading up here today. I can't, the lights are not real great. Let me get down here where I can see. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Satan loves to give us so many fears and insecurities that immobilize us and prevent us from making the decisions that we need to make. Don't be so insecure that you can't make decisions. Being a people pleaser can prevent you from making decisions. You're so afraid that whatever decision you make, everybody won't like it, and then they're going to talk about you or have an opinion about you. You know what? They're probably going to talk about you anyway. <laughs> I mean, they probably are. Probably no matter what you do, they're going to talk about you. One thing's for sure, somebody is not going to like you no matter what you do. So why don't you start just making your own decisions and stop checking to see if everybody around you likes it? Some people are just simply afraid to be wrong. They may be too proud to be able to deal with the thought of having made a wrong decision. Like, practice with me, say, I was wrong. I was wrong. Somebody watching on television right now, you desperately need that. <laughs> Honestly, I just got like such a witness in my heart that you're watching and you're like, the biggest thing that you need to do is come to the point where you can simply say, I made a mistake. Don't make excuses about it. Don't try to justify it. Just say, I made a mistake. And you know what? That's all part of the human experience. 
Making mistakes is part of the human experience. And I think if we really know who we are in Christ, making a mistake doesn't undo us so much. I make mistakes. How many of you make mistakes? Then we might as well admit it and stop letting it control our future. And then once a decision is made, you must follow through. Some people may stay indecisive simply to keep themselves from having to be responsible for the work they're going to have to do after they make the decision. I think I better say that one again, maybe. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that commitment the first of the year. Well, why do you need to wait till the first of the year? Because you're putting off the pain, the discomfort, the work, the sacrifice, whatever it is. But you know what? It's not going to be any easier the more you put it off. wonder what would happen in life if when we know we need to do something, we just go do it. Get rid of all the mental gymnastics that we do and think it to death, but just decide this is what I need to do and I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to get it over with. I'm going to set my mind. I'm going to keep it set. This thing is not going to be on my mind the rest of my life. Let's just do it and get it done. I want to see some more people be activated in doing what's right in their life. Don't let other people make your decisions. Be God pleasers and not men pleasers be led by the Holy Ghost amen I want to be led by the Holy Ghost now I want to talk to you for a minute about healthy habits and I think I'm gonna have to sit down here and just have a little motherly chat with you I just feel like I need to put on my mother hat and talk to you like my kids are you ready all right you guys need to start taking better care of yourself I want you to be healthy as you get older I want you to be strong full of energy I want you to be able to do everything that God has got for you to do in your life and I don't want you to use up all the energy that you have now in the first 20 30 years of your life and then be a worn out mess when you're 50 60 70 and so on and so forth now listen and you know I tell this all the time so you probably already know but on my next birthday which will be in about eight months I'll be 70 years old and now look at me I feel so good I honestly feel better than I did when I was 35 I have energy I work hard but I rest hard too I've learned to work I've learned to play I don't live on junk I drink lots of water I exercise and I know everybody hates the exercise word you know what whatever you do even if you just walk you got to move I mean the point is is God gave us all these joints that we have in our body so we can move you have look at all the joints you have they're all created so we can move and do things <laughs> just lay with a remote control in your hand feel so bad I just... <laughs> let me show you a scripture that's actually one of my favorite but it can be just a little bit spooky <laughs> you ever seen a spooky scripture Proverbs 18 9 he who is loose and slack in his work is a brother to him who is a destroyer now why does that say that because if you're not taking care of your stuff then in effect you are helping to destroy it it's like Dave shared, shared earlier what we gain we have to maintain and he who does not use his endeavors to heal himself is a brother to him who commits suicide <laughs> okay let's have a little confession session how many of you are not taking care of yourself like you should <laughs> you have got to be kidding <laughs> give me a cotton pick and break that was 90% of the room
Your health is one of the greatest gifts that God has given you. And I can tell you right now, even if you feel good and you're not taking care of yourself, you won't feel good forever if you don't start taking care of yourself now. I see it all the time. And young people, I'm glad you're here, but sometimes you are the worst at this. <laughs> Stay up to two, three o'clock in the morning, get two hours sleep, go to work, two cares. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not telling you not to have any fun, but you know, you sure got to use some wisdom because I can tell you what, someday you're going to be 72. And I know right now you think that, oh, God, nobody could be that old. Well, you will be that old someday. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh. So I just want to encourage you that while you're farming new habits, it's important for you to stay positive and think about the good thing that you're trying to do instead of thinking about the bad habit that you're trying to break. We always have a tendency to focus on, I need to break this habit, I need to break this habit. But really what we should do is focus on the good thing that God is working in us. Be thankful, God, I thank you that you're working in me. Thank you that you're working this good thing in me and the good will force out the bad. So we have a new book, Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits, I can't imagine anybody who couldn't use the material in this book. So get a copy, buy a couple more, and give them to friends. They're going to appreciate you for doing that. It's a very uplifting, positive approach to how you can farm good habits in your life. God bless you. Once I started taking care of what I had, I started to break my spending habit. As a family, we made the God habit. It's like living in a different house. This has affected every area of my life. Did you know that focusing on developing good habits will help you break the bad ones? Today, we're offering Making Good Habits, Breaking Bad Habits for your donation of any amount. Call us right now, toll free. 1-800-727-9673. I'm here at our St. Louis Dream Center. Behind me is a back-to-school event aimed at giving away school supplies to the children living in the city of St. Louis. Today's festivities are not just about providing necessary school supplies and clothing. It's about bringing hope to a hurting community. It's about telling people that God loves them in a tangible way. I'm asking you to partner with us in this outreach and others like this all around the world. Thank you so much for helping us take away someone's pain. People get pretty excited about Magazine Day. Start your free subscription to the Enjoying Everyday Life magazine today. Did I mention it's free? Oh yeah, it's free. And all you need to do to get it is call or click today. Thank you, friends and partners. Together, we're sharing the love of Christ around the world. To find out more, please contact us or visit us online at JoyceMeyer.org. Join us in partnership as we share the love of Christ around the globe. The proceeding was paid for by the friends and partners of Joyce Meyer Ministries.